Hey guys, Frightener22 here, and welcome to my April 9th DVD update. Now I know what you're thinking. Frightener, you've been on a complete procrastinator. You've been incredibly lazy with your YouTube channel. You haven't updated any new videos in like two months. And you know what? You're right. All of you guys are absolutely right. I've gotten incredibly lazy with making videos, and I'm still buying more than ever, so all it's really done is just, it's just basically amounted to so much stuff that I need to show you in a new DVD update that it's just gotten a little out of control, so much to the point that I feel like I just need to do several videos just to kind of show you all the stuff that I've gotten over the last two months, where if you know me personally, that's a lot of stuff to show. I mean, like, in a Word document, it's basically about three pages currently right now of new stuff that I have to show you since the last DVD update. So I'm just going to slowly trinkle out videos over the next few weeks of, you know, all the stuff that I've gotten since the last DVD update, which was like in February. And on the upside, this will kind of give me a better chance to talk about some of the titles in a little bit more detail than I normally do, where I'm just kind of like rushing through things. So I think this will actually be a lot better, but I just want to apologize for everybody you know, to everybody for waiting so long to do this new DVD update. I keep getting comments every few days about when the new video is going to go up, so I finally figured I'm not doing anything tonight. I have no reason not to do this video tonight, so let's just do it. So this is for all you guys watching. The first one that we have is, and uh, first and foremost, actually all the stuff in this update right now is all Blu-rays. Oh yeah. So the first one is actually a hard title. It's from Blue Underground, and this is The Night Train Murders. I actually, this has been sitting on my shelf since I got it. I think it came out in, I don't know, I think it came out in like February, I think? Somewhere in and around there. I think it came out in February, but I still have yet to watch it. It's a real sleazy 70s horror movie. A lot of people compare it to Last House on the Left, and I hear a lot of people even claim that it's even sleazier than Last House on the Left, which is awesome if you're an exploitation fan like myself, but I can't really comment too much on it because I haven't seen it, but from what I have heard is um, the technical you know, details on this are really good. The film apparently looks and sounds really good on the Blu-ray format, so I'm going to be looking forward to checking this out whenever I do get to it. Um... Like, two months ago, I got on a really big kick with collecting uh, and, you know, basically upgrading a lot of 90s uh, teen comedies that I loved. Some that I had on DVD and other ones I just never had, so they were cheap, they were catalog titles, and I figured, you know, now's the best time to get it. So, the first one I got is actually the 10-year reunion edition of Can't Hardly Wait. This movie is awesome. Uh, this came out in 1998, I believe, uh, and I loved this movie when it came out. Uh, it's one of those films that anytime it's on TV, I'll normally watch it wherever it is. It's got a great cast. It's got Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ethan Embry, um, Peter Fascinelli, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, Fascinelli, he's, you know, kind of got onto a lot more fame in the Twilight movies, but he was also in a really good movie the year after this called The Big Kahuna with Kevin Spacey and Danny DeVito. So if you guys um, have never heard of that one, definitely check that one out. That's a really underrated comedy. Um, Seth Green is in this. Uh, this chick right here, which I'm blanking on her name, but I believe she was in Big Love. Um... I think her name's Lauren Ambrose, yeah. I think she went on to be in things like Big Love, but overall this has got a really, really stellar cast. I've always really enjoyed this. It's got a great uh, 90s pop soundtrack, which is awesome. But yeah, this is definitely one of the best uh, of like the late 90s teen comedies. Oh, and most importantly, the best thing about this movie is this is actually the last film to ever feature Charlie Corsmo. Now, if people don't know, or uh, Corsmo, for people that don't know who Charlie Corsmo is, he's the geek in this one, but he's awesome. He was in so many great movies. Um, he was in Dick Tracy, he was Robin Williams' son in Hook, and after a few years hiatus, he actually came back to do this, and he basically retired from acting indefinitely after he did this film, but this is like the last film, and I think the only film that you actually see a teenage adult version of of him um, acting, but he is hysterical in this, so that alone um, warrants this. There's a lot of great features on this. 
which I haven't gotten to yet, which uh, really annoys me. There's a whole um, making of um, the film, and then there's a whole like reunion where they got back the filmmakers and the actors in it. So I've been dying to check out that special feature since I've gotten to it, but uh, now that I'm doing the DVD update, I think I'm going to get to it sooner than later. Uh, the next one I got is a cool teen comedy, definitely more black comedy, kind of in the vein of things like Heather's, and this is Jawbreaker. A lot of people hate this movie. I don't know why. I've always really dug it. I like Rose McGowan a lot in this. I think that she's like the perfect kind of, you know, actress that you would want in a black comedy set in high school. And she pulls off her part, you know, incredibly. She's just this really bitchy, popular, um, you know check in this movie, but they're great. Um, you have Pam Greer in this as well. Uh, I just really liked it. it it's, it's definitely, um, a weirder one compared to things like 10 Things I Hate About You and Varsity Blues and, you know, uh, things like that. But this is a really good one to check out if you're looking for things that are a little bit more darker and, uh, funny, you know? Um, the next one was just a blatant blind buy. I love Henry Selleck. Uh, he was the director of Nightmare Before Christmas and James and the Giant Peach. And this was another film that he did that I had never seen before, so I wanted to pick it up because it was real cheap. And this is uh, Monkey Bone. This is another film that a lot of people are very split on. They either love it, they hate it. It's got a really, really weird tone from what I'm told. It's got Brendan Fraser and Chris Kattan in it um, and Bridget Fonda. Uh, and Whoopi Goldberg's actually in it too. I still haven't gotten to it, but um, it's kind of being passed off to me or described to me as like Who Framed Roger Rabbit on crack. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is one of my favorite movies of all time and adding like the crack element kind of raises my eyebrow, but in a good way. I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. And if it's from Henry Selleck, you know you're going to get something weird, offbeat, but definitely visually interesting at the very least. Uh, the next one I got is a Diamond Edition Blu-ray um, that is a welcome addition to my ever-growing Disney Blu-ray collection, and this is the Diamond Edition of Lady and the Tramp. Surprisingly, out of all the Disney animated classic films, this one I had never, ever seen before until I picked up the Blu-ray. Um, I think this came out on Valentine's Day, which was perfect timing on Disney's part. Um, I watched it the night that I got it. Absolutely fell in love with it, much like I did with, you know, Peter Pan and Fantasia and Snow White. But this is a great one. This is from, like, the early 70s. Uh, Walt had already passed by that time. But this is definitely one that has his, you know, his fingerprints all over it. So, uh, really charming, romantic, cute, animated tale. So, uh, definitely recommend checking this one out. The Blu-ray treatment on this is nothing short of breathtaking. Disney, in my opinion, Disney actually gives the best Blu-rays. They give their films the best effort possible. You know, some people might argue with that with, like, catalog titles, but definitely their animated um, gems. They always give, like, five-star treatment. Overall, I've never been disappointed with a Disney Blu-ray. I think that they're the best when it comes to um, giving their films the Blu-ray uh, format leap. So definitely check out Lady and the Tramp. Uh, the next one... Uh, you know, just talking about Henry Selleck, I picked up a film that I really, really loved uh, back when it came out in 1996. Uh, the author of the book is uh, my favorite author of all time, and this is uh, James the Giant Peach Special Edition. Now, this is funny, because although I just was complimenting how great a job Disney does on their Blu-rays, this one has kind of gotten, you know, a very mediocre review. Now, I would actually love to hear um, Henry Selleck's um, viewpoints on the Blu-ray treatment on this. Maybe the way that the Blu-ray looks was the way that it was intended to look. I'm not sh so sure. But compared to the other Disney Blu-rays, this one definitely looks like it's not as the you know greatest quality um, as the other ones. But nonetheless, the stop motion is fantastic. The story is awesome and intriguing. I always really love this, and it's from the imagination of Roald Dahl, who, of course, you know, gave us such things as, as uh, Matilda, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Fantastic Mr. Fox, the BFG, the list goes on and on. But this is a really, really good uh, stop-motion film, and uh, Tim Burton produced it, too, which is cool. Um, the next one I got, I already owned, but I really went on a splurge of an OCD kind of... Um, collecting habit of getting all the Disney Blu-rays that have slipcovers. It was a really, really hard and annoying journey, but I managed to get all the Disney Blu-rays that I wanted and felt like they needed to be in my collection, all with their slipcovers. So I'm very, 
very happy to say that I own these. So this was just one that I double dipped on again because it had the slip cover, and this is the two disc Blu ray DVD combo of Wally. -E. Not gonna waste too much time talking about this. Most people have seen this film, it came out in 2008. Very minimal dialogue, incredibly great story, awesome animation. I mean, it's Pixar, you know, we've come to expect nothing but greatness from them, and that's exactly what you get in Wally. -E. The next two are two more Disney Blu-rays um, that I picked up, you know, because of the OCD slipcover habit, but also um, because I had just recently had seen The Secret World of Arietti, which was uh, from the Studio Ghibli um, animation studio, and Disney does their distribution in the States, which is great because it kind of gives uh, people in the States to see these really great, um, you know, foreign uh, films, you know, in theaters in the States, which is great. And these are two um, other Studio Ghibli films that I haven't gotten around to checking out, but I've heard nothing but great things. Um, and the first one is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Uh, really cool stuff. Obviously, when they do the American ones, they dub them in American using, you know, American actors. So this one has uh, the voice talents of Alison Lohan, uh, Uma Thurman, Patrick Stewart, Edward James Olmos, and Shia LaBeouf. So I've heard this one's really good. I believe this film is actually from, like, 1984, somewhere in and around there. The next one is a more recent one. I think it's from 08, and uh, most people heard about this film. Uh, this is Ponyo, and again, they uh, were utilizing American actors for the American version, so you have like the likes of Kate Blanchett, Noah Cyrus, Matt Damon, Tina Fey, uh, Lily Tomlin, Betty White, Liam Neeson. Again, I haven't seen this one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if, uh, you know, if I enjoyed Secret World of Arietti, um, I'm hoping to enjoy these just as much as I enjoyed that one, so I'm very excited to check those out. Um, two more Disney Blu-rays. Always loved uh, the first film, but I had surprisingly never gotten around to seeing the second one, which is really weird, so I scooped them both up in one order. Um, the first one is Nicolas Cage in National Treasure. Awesome movie. Real kind of modern-day, uh, tech-savvy Indiana Jones-type film. Awesome, awesome stuff. I love this movie. And its sequel, uh, National Treasure 2, Book of Secrets. These films were actually both directed by John Turtletub, who, um, to 90s movie fans, uh, he made, he kind of broke out on the scene with Three Ninjas, which is a great film. And then he went on a few years later after the National Treasure movies to doing um, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is a criminally underrated Disney film. If you guys have not seen that film, I love it. It's so much fun. There's, you know... Disney hasn't had that much luck at the box office with the live-action stuff that they've been putting out, um, you know, like Sorcerer's Apprentice, Prince of Persia, which, again, was another really, really fun movie, and, you know, audiences just missed out on I'll admit, I didn't even see that one in theaters. It just, like, I missed out on that one completely, but I saw it on Blu-ray. I own it in my, you know, I have it in my collection now, and that's a really fun movie. It's the same kind of fate that happened with John Carter. I mean, you know, there's a million things that you can root to what may have happened to John Carter's dismal box office return, but regardless of what people say, whatever if it was the title, the lack of, of Mars at the end of that, the film is fun. It's not crazy original by all, you know, by the standards of what we've seen today, like Star Wars, Star Trek, but if you see uh, John Carter and you know where it's from, which is an Edgar Rice Burroughs um, novel, which is from the early 1900s, it predates, um, you know, Burroughs even writing Tarzan, this, you know, it kind of was like the first science fiction story, so really you know, George Lucas and people like that, you know, kind of have to pay tribute to Edgar Rice Burroughs and the John Carter books. Without them, you could definitely make a case that there would be no Star Trek or Star Wars. So definitely check out, you know, John Carter and more of Disney's more recent live action um, efforts because they're really fun. So definitely check the National Treasure movies out, Sources Apprentice, John Carter, I'm done making my case for live-action Disney films. Just see them. They're great, magical popcorn fun. Check them out. Uh, the next one was um, a live-action film, not directly from the Disney label, but from Touchstone, and this was Wild Hogs. Uh, I just, you know, was curious about this one. I, it looked funny. I heard pretty good things. It's got a cool cast. Martin Lawrence, John Travolta, Tim Allen, and William H. Macy, um, about a group of guys that are friends, and they decide to go on a road trip on their motorcycles, and, you know, hijinks kind of ensue from there. This was a fun one. Uh, Marissa Tomei's in it, too. Uh, it's cool. Like, I mean, it's, you know, it's not something that's gonna be, you know, winning Oscars or, you know, being hailed about, and like, you know, uh, 
you know, really uppity, kind of yuppie uh, film journals, but it's fun, and that's, you know, why we go to the movies, is for fun. Uh, the next one I got, I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this, and I totally welcome it, because it didn't do good, and a lot of people hated this movie, but you know what? There was something... I haven't watched it since I saw it in theaters, but I bought it on Blu-ray, and I still feel like there's something there, so... The next one is Mike Myers in The Cat in the Hat. I know people absolutely loathe this movie. I mean, hate it to the core. But I thought that it was not bad. Like, then again, I don't... I didn't grow up reading and worshipping Dr. Seuss. I was more of a Roll Dahl, R.L. Stein kid growing up. So Dr. Seuss didn't really hold... I mean, I knew his books. I'm sure I read one or two as a kid, but I... You know, I, I didn't really hold them in high regard or, you know, as high regard as other kids did. But I saw this movie and I thought it was fun. I mean, visually, this movie is like, will just friggin, you know, warp your eyes sockets because it's, you know, it's visually, it's an amazing looking film. You know, you can say this or that about the performances from Mike Myers and whatnot, but you can't take away the production design in this film. It's inc it's a, a, an amazing spectacle for your eyes, but, you know, like, I thought that this was a fun kids film, and I'm definitely happy to have it in my Blu-ray collection, no matter what kind of flack I'm about to get in the comments underneath this video for owning this, but, you know what? Give it a chance again. It's been like 10 years since it came out, so give it a chance again before you say it's like the worst thing since the upcoming apocalypse. Um, moving on. Another film that I got when I kind of was going on that 90s teenage film, um, uh, you know, buying spree, I picked this film up because it kept kind of like being suggested to me, and I was like, you know what? The price is low. I've always kind of liked that movie anyway, and I haven't seen it. I don't even recall ever seeing the full thing, so I, you know, was curious about it, because the parts that I did see actually really made me laugh. So I picked up uh, the film starring Gwyneth Paltrow and Jack Black, Shallow Hal. I don't know, like, I'm just, I want to finish it, because all the parts that I had seen, I probably have seen, like, maybe a quarter of it, maybe half of it, I forget, but, uh, you know, I'm happy to have it again. It seems like a fun comedy. Um, the next one I got, I mainly got because the sequel that was coming out looked like a lot of fun, and of course I didn't get around to seeing the sequel, so I'll have to catch that on Blu-ray when it comes out. So um, I picked this up for like $8.99, and it's Brendan Fraser in Journey to the Center of the Earth. This is another fun film, uh, you know, not amazing, it's fun, it will entertain you for 90 minutes, but I was intrigued, you know, what I always kind of wanted to see, but what tipped me over was the trailers for Journey to the Mysterious Island, because the sequel kind of looked like it was going to be a little bit more fun than this one, and uh, like I said, this one was fun. I'm not taking anything away from it. It's just not, like, overly amazing. I enjoyed it. Happy to have it in the collection. Cool way to kill 90 minutes, but I'm very much tempted to see the sequel because the sequel looked, you know, just cooler in a lot of ways. I don't know how to explain it. Just, like, all the things that I saw in the trailers just kind of piqued my interest a little bit more than... Uh, what was going on in this one. So I'll definitely um, do a blind buy on that one, I'm sure, when it comes out. Um, the next one was uh, another 90s uh, teen film that I wanted to pick, because I haven't seen this one in years, actually. I think the last time I saw it was probably when it was, uh, you know, when I rented it from Video Video, which is a local video store in my town during the VHS days. And this is James Vanderbeek in Varsity Blues. Yeah, like a football-type teenage movie. I think it takes place in Texas, actually. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely remember kind of liking it. A lot of people attribute this movie to, you know, the famous, like, uh, you know, whipped cream scene with, I think it's Amy Smart, where she puts it on, like, her boobs and stuff, and that was, like, the big draw. Like, dude, you gotta see this scene. Like, she does this. And I remember it being, like, parodied, you know, you know, so many people doing parodies of it, like on SNL, I think, and MTV, so overall, you know, aside from that, this was a pretty good movie from what I remember, so I'm looking forward to checking it out again. 
And the last one for this update, of which there will be many more just to kind of finish up all the stuff that I've got recently, um, and this is the 10th anniversary edition of 10 Things I Hate About You, starring the late Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles and Larissa Olnick from The Secret World of Alex Mack. Um, this film has a cool slipcover on it. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be around. It's probably not going to be around forever. Normally, with the, the deal with the slipcovers is um, they're normally just around for the first original printing of the Blu-rays, and after that, they kind of chuck them and get rid of the blue uh, the slip covers with them but i'm really happy to get this because i love having the slip covers on the movies that do come with them but uh yeah this is actually this is actually one of my favorite teen comedies from the 90s i love everything about it it's it's you know kind of a it's a story that was taken from a Shakespeare story, and it's kind of just modernized, but it works. I never read the original story that it's based on, but there's definitely, you know, the Shakespeare influences scattered throughout the film to kind of let you know that it is. I, I don't know if people ever made that connection, but they're there. You know, they're kind of uh, subtly sprinkled uh, throughout the film. But yeah, this is a really, really funny film. Um, you know, one of the big scenes that always kind of like uh you know made, you know put a smile on my face because i thought it was kind of cool and well done was when heath ledger is trying to like swoon julia styles and he gets on the pa system during like soccer practice in a soccer stadium at the school which is friggin huge in this movie this the high school that they go to is like beyond huge i think i would get lost every day trying to get to lunch because it just looks like a a friggin' mall. It's insane. But anyway, he gets on the PA system to kind of swoon her so he sings, um, you know, that really cheesy, awesome love song, uh, You're Just Too Good to Be True. I forget if that's the actual title, but I always thought, damn, that'd be a cool way to swoon somebody. Damn, but I can't sing, so it would never work out. He pulls it off in this movie, and it's really funny, and overall, it's just really cool. You get a, um, a young appearance by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who is trying to swoon uh, Larissa Olnick's character in it, and Julia Stiles is, of course, her older sister and stuff, so a lot of great performance in this. The whole movie, you know, is laughs all around. I've always really enjoyed this. It's one of my favorite teen comedies. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out. Well, guys, that wraps up my April 9th DVD update. Stay tuned because there's going to be plenty of more videos just so I can get caught up on all the stuff I've bought in over the last two months. I'm kind of convinced that I'm probably never going to truly be ahead, but that's okay. That kind of just gives you guys that many more videos to continue to tune into. So thanks again for tuning into my channel. Thanks for, you know, the devoted attention to it. Thanks for commenting on the, you know, on the videos, asking when the next one is. It's cool to know that the supporters are still willing to check out my channel. Awesome. I'm happy to give you guys a new one. So definitely uh, keep your eye out for the next one and continue to support, subscribe, all that good stuff. This has been Frightener22, and I'll catch you in another video. Later.